Son doesn't trust sick mom's care. Sets up hidden camera. Mrs. Paquita was living her last days in a hospital because she suffered from an incurable lung disease that had even caused her to lose her voice. Her son Wilmer visited her frequently, and on one of these occasions, he noticed that his mother became uneasy when one of her nurses entered her room. Immediately, the man suspected that something bad was happening. When his mother appeared with bruises on her body, he was determined to find the truth. He installed hidden cameras, and what he discovered was truly shocking. Mrs. Paquita is one of those unfair cases in which people who don't smoke end up paying for the consequences of those who do. While she didn't have any vices, her caregivers were compulsive smokers, and she had inhaled all that smoke for 30 long years until her lungs began to collapse. Paquita was a humble girl who began to work at an early age with her mother, collecting scrap metal in a car through the main streets of the city to later sell it and obtain some income that allowed her to feed herself and her two other siblings. They had been abandoned by her partner, but Paquita never complained about their fate. She worked with great dedication alongside her mother and promised that one day she would get a better job to support them, and she'd no longer have to collect scrap metal. Months before she turned 15 years old, a neighbor told Paquita that the house where she worked needed someone to clean the bathrooms only, and the salary was not negligible. With her mother's permission, she showed up for work, and seeing how efficient she was, they hired her for general cleaning. As the years progressed, the bosses had more confidence in her, to the point that they trained her to be the kind of assistant responsible for house purchases, payments, going to the bank to withdraw and deposit money, and other trusted functions. Thanks to that work, Paquita was able to fulfill her mother's promise to provide her for like a queen. Her mother no longer had to work, had her food assured, and they improved their house, significantly raising their standard of living. She even had enough to support her siblings. Later, the owner of the house asked Paquita to be a companion, and thus the young girl began to frequent the social circle to accompany the lady who brought her fine dresses and shoes that she had never imagined she could wear, even jewelry. The lady introduced her to society as her niece, and she accompanied her almost always. Both the wife and the husband had the habit of smoking, so Paquita began to inhale third-party smoke from a very young age, gradually affecting her lungs, even though she never had a cigarette in her mouth. In social events she attended with her employer, Paquita met Fidel, the son of some neighbors of the mansion who fell in love with her. But he only deluded her, made her pregnant, and then disappeared from her life. From that relationship, Wilmer was born, for whom she worked all her life. Mrs. Paquita trained him academically, and he became a great veterinarian working in the capital. Despite the distance, he always cared for his mother. When her lung disease was discovered, there wasn't much that could be done, and he stopped working upon learning that her medical condition had advanced. Her cough was uncontrollable, and the specialist recommended she be admitted to the chronic pulmonary disease sanatorium for better care. Wilmer admitted her, and at first he was happy with the care she received. However, months later, he noticed his mother's strange behavior whenever Nurse Lucy entered her room. Wilmer felt that Miss Paquita wanted to tell him something about it, and when she entered the room, she became restless and tried to speak. Wilmer immediately left the room and went to the site manager to ask him to investigate the nurse. The doctor wanted to explain some things to him, but Wilmer was very angry. He just left the office and returned in the afternoon to see his mother without saying anything else. Also, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these real-life stories every day. Now, back to the story. A week later, he came back and was told by the director he'd installed hidden cameras and wanted to review the content of them. When they hooked up the footage and records from the cameras to the computer, Wilmer couldn't believe it. He began to cry, and when Lucy the nurse arrived at the office, the man fell on his knees before her. He wept without saying a single word. In the video, the woman appeared caring for Mrs. Paquita with love and tenderness. She read her stories and even took care of her when she wasn't on her shift because she reminded her of her own mother whom Lucy had lost 20 years ago. Lucy believed she saw her mother in Mrs. Paquita, so she took extreme care of her, worried about feeding her and staying with her even when she should have been resting at her own house for work. For this reason, Mrs. Paquita felt so reassured when Lucy entered her room. Wilmer was really sorry because he found out that the bruises were due to Mrs. Paquita having fallen out of the bathroom. Wilmer not only apologized to Lucy, but also assigned her an extra salary. One of the Chinese proverbs says, If you want to be happy for an hour, take a nap. If you want to be happy for a day or two, go fishing. If you want to be happy for a year, inherit wealth. If you want to be happy for the rest of your life, help someone. Since ancient times, the greatest thinkers have all advocated the same conclusion. Happiness may be obtained by assisting others. As a result, we learn at a young age that it's better to give than to receive. The old saying is ingrained in our minds from the moment we bite into the first slice of a shared birthday cake. Is there, however, a deeper meaning hidden beneath this truth? The answer is a resounding yes. Anecdotal evidence suggests that giving is a powerful pathway to personal improvement and long-term satisfaction. Scientific studies provide solid facts to support the claim. We now know that giving activates the same areas of the brain that are excited by food. Thanks to advances in functional magnetic resonance imaging (fMRI), experiments have found evidence that altruism is encoded in the brain and that it's a pleasurable emotion to experience. 
giving back to others may very well be the key to living a life that's not just happier, but also healthier, wealthier, more productive, and more meaningful. However, it's vital to note that giving is not always a pleasurable experience. Giving may leave us feeling empty and taken advantage of, and this is entirely possible. Some suggestions to assist you in giving not until it hurts, but until it feels fantastic are as follows. Discover your life's purpose. Our giving should be motivated by our own personal passions. It's not the amount of money we give that matters, but the amount of love we put into our giving. It's only natural that we'll be more concerned with this than that, and that's just okay. What we choose to support should not only be the right thing to do, but it should also align with our individual values and interests. Dedicate some of your time. The gift of time is often more precious to the recipient and more fulfilling to the giver than the gift of money. While it can be more challenging to donate time, we all have time on our hands and we can all give part of that time to help others. Whether that means devoting our entire lives to service or simply giving a few hours each day or a few days a year to charitable endeavors, it can make a significant impact. Donate to organizations with well-defined goals and outcomes. According to Harvard scientist Michael Norton, giving to a cause that specifies what they're doing with your money leads to more happiness than giving to an umbrella cause where you're not sure where your money's going. Look for ways to combine your personal interests and abilities with the needs of others. Giving without expecting anything in return can quickly become overwhelming. In the absence of natural survival impulses, according to Adam Grant, author of Give and Take, in order to be otherish, being willing to give more than you receive while still keeping your own interests in mind, you must first understand yourself. Take a proactive approach rather than a reactive one. We've all experienced the anxiety that comes with being coerced into making a donation, such as when friends ask us to contribute to their fundraising campaigns. In these situations, we're more inclined to give in order to avoid embarrassment than we are to offer out of charity and compassion. This style of giving will not leave you with a pleasant feeling, but will leave you with resentment. Instead, set aside some time to reflect on your options and identify the most appropriate charity to support based on your principles. Do not succumb to the pressure of guilt into making a donation. While I don't want to dissuade people from donating to worthy charities, it's important to acknowledge that giving out of guilt may not lead to long-term commitment to the cause. The key is to find a method of giving that works for you. The more you give, the more likely it is that you'll find meaning, purpose, and happiness in your life. All the things that we seek in life but find so difficult to come by. Friends, Wilmer's distrust led him to discover a great truth and to regain faith in humanity. In life, not everything is evil. There are still good people capable of selflessly giving themselves to others. This is where our story ends today.